In today's video, let's look at this equation x cubed plus y cubed equals bracket x plus y square, where we have to find integer solutions for x and y. Equations like this are known as Diophantine equations, and unlike the usual linear or quadratic equations in one variable you have seen, there is no systematic algorithm or textbook methods which you can memorize to solve this family of equations, and each question might require a different and new technique. Here, I will show you two common but different ways of approaching this type of equations, so stay tuned until the end of the video if you would like to see both methods. First of all, I would like to introduce this wonderful identity. Given an odd positive integer n, x power n plus y power n can be factorized with x plus y as a first factor. The full formula is given on the screen. To see why this is true, you can just perform long division. This identity allows us to factorize expression like x cubed plus y cubed or x power 5 plus y power 5 as you can see, which will be very helpful for the question. With this said, let's factorize the left hand side of an equation to get x plus y multiplied with x squared minus xy plus y squared. The next obvious thing to do is to cancel off a factor of x plus y. But before we can do that, we do need to make sure that we are not dividing by 0. So we have to stipulate the condition that x plus y isn't 0. So let's deal quickly with the case where x plus y is 0 to get it out of the way before we can proceed with the rest of the question. We can see easily that when x plus y equals 0 or when x equals minus y, both the left hand side and right hand side of the equation equals 0, regardless of our choice of x. This means we have infinitely many solution paths as long as the x and y were by only a sign change. Having found an entire family of solutions, we can move on and assume that x plus y doesn't equal 0 and proceed to cancel the factor from both sides of the equation. Doing so, we get x square minus xy plus y square equals x plus y. So what do we do now? Remember that we need to find integers x and y which satisfies the equation. If you take a closer look, the first few terms seems to be closely resembling the expansion of x minus y square, where we are just one xy short. Is there a way to somehow create this extra copy of xy to allow for our factorization? A common trick which we can use is to multiply the entire equation by 2. Doing so, we get the 2xy we want, but at the same time, we also get another copy of x square and y square. Let's proceed with a factorization and obtain the expression bracket x minus y square plus x square minus 2x plus y square minus 2x. Do you see something familiar again? Note that x square minus 2x plus 1 can be factorized as x minus 1 square. The same goes for y. But it appears that we are missing two copies of 1 here. Fret not. Inspired by our earlier approach, we can add the two copies of 1 to both sides of the equation, and doing so, allow us to factorize the left-hand side of the equation fully. Now we have three square integers adding up to 2, and so there must be two 1 square and 1 0 square, subjected to permutations of the terms. It is easy then to solve the equations on a case-by-case -case basis. Let's take a look at case 2, and I will leave case 1 and case 3 as exercises if you are interested. We can start from x minus 1 square equals 0 to conclude that x must be 1. Having found that x equals 1, we can now look at x minus y square equals 1. Taking square root, we can see that either y equals 2 or y equals 0. Hence, we have found two solutions pair for case 2, which are 1, 0 and 1, 2. We can repeat this process for case 1 and case 3, and to wrap up the solutions, we see that there are infinitely many solutions of the type y equals minus x and 5 solutions obtained by analyzing each of case 1, case 2 and case 3. Do note that 0, 0 which was obtained under case 2 overlaps with the solution obtained when x plus y equals 0 since 0 equals minus 0 but we just include it here for clarity. The above concludes the first solution which is solving the Ophantine equation through factorization. We make good use of the fact that we are adding up a few square numbers to 
to obtain a relatively small positive number. So the choices for the square numbers are constrained, allowing us to solve for x and y. What if we don't prefer the method of factorization? There is actually another way to do this, right after we cancel off the factor of x plus y from both sides of the equation. We can rewrite the equation to view it as a quadratic in terms of x, with coefficients in terms of y. If we view the quadratic as ax squared plus bx plus c, then here, a equals 1, b equals minus 1 minus x, and c equals y squared minus y. Recall that we are trying to find integer solutions in x and y, and in order for the quadratic equation to have any real solutions in x at all, we require the discriminant b squared minus 4ac to be larger or equal to 0. Putting everything together, we see that this implies minus 3y squared plus 6y plus 1 must be greater than or equal to 0. Some simple graph sketching tells us that y must be between minus 1 and 3 for this to happen. This then allows us to check manually for the case where y equals 0, 1, and 2 and obtain the corresponding x. This is a powerful technique you should bear in mind whenever you are dealing with quadratics, especially in terms of x and y. The discriminant offers a powerful way for us to constrain the range of any potential solutions and often allows us to check just a few cases before finding potential solutions or concluding that no solution exists. Alright, we have come to the end of the video. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you have found this helpful. Seeing the subscriber count goes up really motivates me to produce better content. I will see you in the next video, and until then, bye.